We got pile number one right here and pile number two right here. All of them, which are Kimi ni Todoke. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and in this video, I'm going to be sharing all the manga that I read in the month of June. I participated in another manga challenge. This one was made by Epic Manga Book Club over on TikTok. So if you're not following Jessamine, I will leave Jessamine's profile down in the information box. But basically, uh, the challenge was there's 30 days in June. Let's <laughs> read 30 volumes in 30 days. I think I went over that, but you know what? I read a lot of great stuff, so I'm going to be sharing that with you in this video. So I'm going to separate these into three piles. I did read a few series, so I can just talk about all of them at once. But the first one that I want to talk about is this guy. I if you've been following me for a while, you know that I love Something's Wrong With Us. It's one of my favorite uh, my favorite series that is ongoing. Uh, so this is a darker thriller romance. Um, they call it a shoujo, but this is not a shoujo. This is a Jose manga. It is definitely for a more uh, mature audience, I would say. Um, definitely very dramatic. And this volume brought so much drama answered some of my questions but gave me more questions and yeah I was just like all of these tabs are dramatic moments like I was just in shock I was gasping I was just like oh my god I can't believe <laughs> I can't believe what I'm reading it was just it was really great but the bad thing is um now we're stuck waiting for volume seven which won't get a translation until February of next year so they left with a cliffhanger typical for this series and I'm stuck waiting more than half a year so I am uh, yeah it just it kills me that I have to wait that long but it was a great volume if you have been started reading something's wrong with us uh, you have plenty of time to catch up and enjoy all the drama and the twists and the turns and the cliffhangers like I just I love it and the artwork in this was just as beautiful as the previous volumes like oh, I just love love her style look at that so yeah it was amazing highly recommend this series just look at them look at this it's a work of art I love it in last month's manga roundup I mentioned I started reading short cake cake by the same mangaka team as a sign of affection so I read volumes two and three in June I really enjoyed them we got to get to know the boys in the boarding house a little bit more so I really liked it I did pick up the rest of the series I had volumes like four through eight I believe so I'm gonna keep reading that this month but so far so good it's really enjoyable it's about a high school group who lives in the boarding house and there's a little bit of a love triangle it's just you know it sounds <laughs> much more dramatic than it is but it's very cute and so far I've been really enjoying it then I have love of kill I have volumes one and two volume one I found it so disappointing I had high hopes for this um the way people on YouTube as well as TikTok um, mentioned this series was that it was going to be like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith type of thing with like two spies and I had very high hopes but uh volume one just lacked um, I don't know, it lacked a lot. Um, there was a lot of action, a lot of really cool um, art scenes, but I really didn't feel connected to either our male or female lead. I just felt, yeah, very disconnected. Like, entertained by all the action, but disconnected with the actual characters. Um, that being said, I feel like they did sort of redeem themselves in volume two. We got more of the backstory, we got to meet both of the uh both of our leads in this volume there's also a lot more suspense still a lot of action uh but yeah this kind of filled in the gaps that should have been <laughs> added to volume one just to gain more interest in the reader so yeah i i found this enjoyable definitely redeemed themselves with uh volume two but if volume three does not pick up where this one left off and just kind of goes downhill then I'm just gonna drop the series but yeah um I'm not super thrilled by it but yes if they keep the momentum up 
then yes I will keep on reading so once volume three comes out I'll pick it up and I'll let you guys know whether it's worth the read or not then we have one that is definitely worth the read spy family volume five I absolutely adore this series it's so much fun this has action you're getting attached to all the characters we got introduced to a new character in this volume I love it I absolutely love it and then we have Yuri who is um yours brother he's super chaotic and <laughs> over the top I love him and we got more of him in this volume so I was very pleased. Uh, yeah, I love where the series is going. Um, hopefully it gets an official announcement for the anime adaptation. There's been some leaks <laughs> in the past few weeks, but nothing officially confirmed. But I have a feeling it is certainly going to get an anime adaptation. It's too good to not become an anime. <laughs> So yeah, if you haven't picked up Spy Family, honestly, you're missing out. This is definitely worth the hype and I just love it so much. I love the whole, the whole family. <laughs> this is like the first time I love a child character, but Anya, who is the telepathic girl, is just so damn funny. Like her facial expressions crack me up. Like look at her. <laughs> She thinks she's being super smart and knows everything, but like, she's just, she's too, I, I won't say naive, but she gets too cocky and then things don't go out, don't go her way. So it's just, it's really funny. I love it so much. Then I did read this BL, which was all over my TikTok. Uh, so we have basically <laughs> volume one and volume two, but they're separate books with different titles so yes uh, so we have the cornered mouse dreams of cheese and the carp on the chopping block jumps twice <laughs> titles that I'm never going to remember so uh, this is definitely a more toxic BL very dramatic and definitely for mature audiences it's quite explicit that being said um, it is well written in my opinion I was very entertained, very invested, but holy crap, I hated both these characters. Both of them were <laughs> pieces of shit. Um, you have this guy who's kind of presented as the goody two-shoes, women love him, um, he was married, he had to get a divorce, so he's painted as this like, you know, perfectionist, ideal husband type of guy, but he... I don't know if it was self-conscious or what it was, but I found them so manipulative. And he was also manipulative. So they were college friends who met up later in life. And yeah, their whole relationship, I would say, is probably one of the most toxic relationships I've read in manga. Um, but they both needed one another, but the way they went about things they ended up just hurting one another more, hurting other characters more. Like in this volume, there was nobody with a good moral compass. Like all of them were corrupt. All of them were just bad people. In this volume, um, you do get presented with um, some characters that actually have a good, you know, a good heart. <laughs> and it's a shame to see how these two just, you know, took advantage of their kindness so yeah they're not great people but it is a good read if you like something that's more dramatic and if you're not going to be idolizing you know a fake fictional relationship like there's nothing about this to <laughs> to aspire or to admire nothing so if you're going to check this out just go into the series knowing that it is very dramatic it is not very healthy. On the other side of the spectrum, we have our teachers are dating. This is a GL that's so cutesy and adorable. I absolutely adore it. I've been speaking a lot about this series over on TikTok. So you have two high school teachers um, starting their relationship. So they obviously have to deal with their faculty members who are super invested in their relationship. They also have to deal with the students knowing that their teachers are dating and the students are like super invested as well and just rooting for both their teachers. It's just adorable. I feel like somebody who enjoys Sweat and Soap will definitely enjoy this series because of the communication 
animation, the fact that they adore one another, it's very lighthearted, it has some comedy in it, and it also has some spicy moments in there. So the mangaka actually refers to the series as fluffy smut, and I think that's a very good <laughs> description for this series. It's very cute. Even the smut is just adorable because they're they're both so like cutesy. So <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I cannot wait for volume 4 to come out, but so far volumes 1 through 3 have been such a joy to read and these two are just, they're so precious, so I highly recommend this series. This is another series that I've spoken about quite a bit on my channel as well as on TikTok. It is Perfect World. They released volume 6 this past month. Well, not this past month last month in June and yes it made me cry once again but this volume I feel like I feel like the wheels are finally starting to turn I don't want to spoil this at all because I do want people to check out this series it is much sadder but that being said I still feel like it addresses uh, disability in a very good and realistic way uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, I did cry, but I'm, I'm feeling a little more optimistic about, about these two after reading this volume. Another series that I enjoy also released a new volume in June. This is my Dress Up Darling volume 4. I will have to be completely honest, I think I mentioned it when I first started reading the series. This is not going to be for everyone. This does have a fair share of fan service which will make people uncomfortable. I just, it is what it is. Um, it's part of the series. I wish there was a lot less of it um, just because the plot itself is very cute and if it didn't have all this fan service this would be almost like a shoujo romance like it is cute but yeah there is fan service so if you're uncomfortable about that then maybe the series won't be for you but I just look past it I skim through it the fan service doesn't really add anything to the story or the characters so I just I learned to like tune it <laughs> tune it off. In this volume of course you have your main characters. You have Wakana, you have Marin who's the girl on the cover. You also have Juju who is this like legendary cosplayer and you have her younger sister who's a middle schooler and Wakana in this volume I feel like his confidence has grown quite a bit to the point that he's now the one encouraging others to follow their dreams and you know take a risk try something new so I really like that about this volume. I personally like it. I'm very much looking forward to the anime adaptation but like I've mentioned before it is not for everyone so if you can find a preview before you go into this series I would highly recommend it because I know some people do not like it at all. Talking about another series that might not be for everyone, but it was certainly for me. This is Live Lessons with Uramichi Onisan. One of my friends on TikTok, her name is Chrissy. She turned me on to the series and I I adored it. It was it was so funny. Probably the funniest manga i read ever um you can tell i mean i annotated the crap out of it it had it just had so many you know relatable moments uramichi is like my twin uh we're the same age his birthday is like two days after mine <laughs> we're both depressed sad millennials with a more like we're just cynical about life so yes if that sounds appealing to you you're gonna love this <laughs> <laughs> this series so yes it follows Uramichi who is a kids TV host and um, nothing in his life has gone to plan he was a gymnast and um, now as an adult you know after college he wound up being a children's TV host <laughs> So yes, he's single, living alone, um, doesn't really have anything like <laughs> anything good in his life. And yeah, and he's working this job, which I mean, he's actually very nice to the kids, but it's typical things, you know, when you just have to work to survive and you hate every single <laughs> minute of it. Relatable stuff. 
<laughs> but yeah, it was really, really funny. Um, the artwork is definitely, you know, a little darker, I would say, but it just adds to the comedy. Uh, you do have a lot of very funny moments with the kids. And like the title suggests, um, Muramichi is giving the kids life lessons. Some of them are a little dark, <laughs> but he, he has, you know, their best interests in his heart. He doesn't want the kids to grow up being sad, depressed millennials. Uh, well, not millennials. Sad, depressed 30 year olds <laughs> when they grow up. So I adored it. Uh, there will be an anime coming out this month. So I'm very excited about that. But my lessons with Uramichi Oni-san, volume one and two. Amazing reads. I highly recommend it if you like a darker comedy. Uh, these guys are by Kodansha, so they're two in ones, very similar to Watakoi. So you have volumes one and two in this volume, and volumes three and four in this one. So, yes, that's why they're a little thicker <laughs> than your average manga. Another manga that I really loved is Boys Run the Riot, which I recently spoke about. This is about a transgender boy and a kind of out of place um, high school guy who transfers into his high school um, and they just, you know, they like dope clothes, they like graffiti, they like street art and they start, you know, they decided they want to start a fashion brand. But obviously um, it doesn't go as smoothly. There's some, you know, some, some stuff, some obstacles that they have to cross. Um, both emotionally as well as physical obstacles. So yes, it's a coming to age story. Um, I won't mention too much just because I have spoken about this quite a lot, but it's a great read with amazing representation for the trans community. The afterword is an interview with the mangaka who is trans himself. So I would highly recommend reading not only the manga, but as well as the interview in the back of the manga. It is amazing stuff. So yeah, if you haven't picked up Boys Run the Riot, I would highly recommend you do so. Volume 2 will be coming out fairly soon, so be on the lookout for that. And the last thing I want to talk about is this ginormous pile. If I can actually carry it, I'm going to try my best. This ginormous pile, which is Kimi ni Todoke. I read volumes 11 through 30, so I finished the series. I... <sighs> This is my favorite shoujo, like hands down my favorite shoujo romance. It is beautiful. Um, if you've only seen the anime, that covers up to, I believe, volume 8 or 9. So they're still in their first year of high school. The whole series does cover all three years of high school. So you have their first, second, and third year. So in the anime, like I said, it only covers up to volume 8 or 9. So you mostly just see Kasehaya and Sawako. And with the rest of the series, you get the relationship and how it progresses. Uh, you get a lot of character development for both of them, not only Sawako, but you also get more from the other couples in the story. So you have Chisu and Ryu, you have Ayane and Kendo here. Um, you get more of their friendships as well. So Kurumi does come back and um, I won't spoil too much if you haven't read it, but she's not as mean as she portrays herself to be. Ayane also, there's a lot of character development for Ayane in the story. So yes, if you have not read Kimi Loke, I would highly recommend you do so. If you found yourself getting frustrated about the anime series and how slow paced it was, yeah, the manga itself is a slow burn. You have 30 volumes, so it's a very long series. That being said, the amount of character development uh, is unmatched. Uh, I, you just become attached to all the different characters, their relationships, their own personal goals and struggles. Like there's so many layers to this series, to all these characters. And yeah, it's just, I can, I can confidently say I know why this is a classic shoujo, you know, series. It's beautiful and i do hope that this does get a full anime adaptation because if um the anime was done almost like almost like fruits basket was done just with a much better piecing um something that follows the manga well 
but also, you know, keeps the audience engaged. Um, I think people would like Kimi to look at a lot more. And plus, uh, the anime left so much to be desired. So I would love to see them, you know, especially their last year of high school. I feel like you see the most um, growth in all of them during the last year of high school. So yeah, I would love to see that part animated. So uh, I hope, I hope someone out there is like, yes, Kimi Nitaloka needs, <laughs> needs a new adaptation because I would love to see that. And yeah, I'm so glad I was very impulsive and purchased the rest of the series because I do not regret reading this. I'm fighting the urge to reread it. <laughs> because I loved it so much and yes I adored it definitely my favorite read in the month of June so that's it for my June manga roundup let me know what you guys read in the comments below if you don't follow me on TikTok make sure to follow me my link is down in the information box and yeah subscribe if you're brand new I'll see you guys very soon in my next video bye